Hey everyone, Joe Waxman here again. And in this video, I want to look at the chart of Snoop Dogg. Uh, yeah. Guys, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe if you have not already. I'm pretty sure everyone knows who Snoop Dogg is. He's a famous rapper, of course. Um, let's go over the Wikipedia. All right. His fame dates back to 92 when he featured when he was featured on Dr. Dre's debut solo single album, Deep Cover. Uh basically he was he was um he, he started rapping when he was young and then he was trained by uh Dr. Dre. Um and then he went on to uh solo album. And I mean, you you guys probably know the story. I mean, he's had plenty of tons of hits, tons of albums, featured in so many different things, movies. He's always in a, you know collaborations. Um, he's signed on to Death Row Records, and he left, and he's been huge, hugely successful, right? Uh. I don't think I need to go over every detail about that. Uh, all kinds of things. Hollywood. He had a. He has a. He's a, has a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Blah blah. blah. Tons of albums. All right. Okay. Early life. His father left when he was young. Um, raised by his mother and stepfather, they called him Snoopy, due to his love. Of Snoopy and the likeness from the uh, character from Peanuts. Uh, he began singing and playing piano at church. In sixth grade, he began rapping and came good at it. Uh, he frequently ran into trouble with the law. He was a member of the Rolling Twenties Crips gang in the east side neighborhood of Long Beach. Um, he's arrested per, uh, for possession of cocaine, frequently incarcerated, including at the Wayside Jail. They recorded homemade tapes. Uh, so Dr. Dre got a hold of his mixtape and um, was impressed by it. And that's how he uh, got in, got his foot in the door there. Okay. Uh, he's he started way he you know his early style was was uh, the the gangster rap that was popular at the time. But he had a he had his own style, obviously. And that's one of the things that makes him really famous. Uh, while the other rappers were, you know being really hard and yelling and, and being very like kind of aggressive. He, his style was very smooth and laid back and has a bit of that Southern draw. And uh, I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. He did a lot of collaborations uh, with various people, Tupac, many other people. Uh, and then sort of, I guess, after the whole the whole thing with um let's see I'll read it here uh was released in, after his the dog father was re released in ninety six the price of appearing to live the gangsta life had become very evident uh, among the many notable hip hop industry deaths and convictions were the death of Su uh, Tupac Shakur and racketeering indictment of Death Row co-founder Suge Knight. Um, I think he got scared, you know, he didn't want to be killed like the other, like Biggie and Tupac or, and, uh, rightfully so. Like I said, with, with Ice Cube, um, gangsta rap was a CIA project, uh, likely thought up by rich and powerful men and women in secret rooms. And then they make phone calls and get the power, big, powerful organizations to enact their bidding. And it goes forth from there. And the whole purpose was, um, 
I mean, I don't know every detail, but at least in large part to to um, influence, you know, poor black youth and other minorities and other even, I guess, to some extent, poor white kids to, to join gangs and make it cool and, you know, make, you know, illegal activity and killing each other cool so that they could fill the prisons and um, uh, really ruin black and poor minority neighborhoods. And like I said, even even I don't think it's limited. I think it's anyone who's underclass who identifies with that sort of, you know, hip hop lifestyle, who anyone who they could capture with it is is who they wanted to, um, you know, fill the prison with and, you know, have them kill each other and destroy the family unit because these are all evil people. To be honest, I mean, that's uh, that's not uh, hyperbole. These are evil people. Not, not. I don't mean. I'm not talking about uh, Snoop Dogg. I'm talking about the CIA and the people who control the CIA and similar type. In any case, uh, so he moved out of the whole gangster rap thing, but he kept doing, you know, hip hop, and he he uh, performed at Lollapalooza. He just spread himself out and just became widely open and available to, you know, the whole, you know, music industry and film industry and whatever he could get his hands on. He's been in so many different things. It's really hard to um, quickly summarize it. Um, more music. Um, blah, blah, blah. Uh, a lot of collaborations. Documentary, um, eleven studio album is documentary. Um, he briefly changed his name to Snoop Lion and recorded Reincarnated, an album, um, a documentary called Reincarnated, along with the studio album by the same name. Um. And he did reggae stuff for a little while. Then he gave that up. And um, produced a compilation of electronic music entitled Loose Joints under the moniker DJ Snoopadelic. Uh, which is interesting. So he's very versatile. Really likes to get his hands in everything. And... Uh, Released the collaboration album with his sons, The Broadest Boys, titled Royal Family, Royal Fam. Broadest is his uh, last name, but that's his stepfather's name, not his father's name. Uh, what else? More collaborations. Um, he did some stuff for the DNC, so he's not very awake or aware of politics. Because the DNC is is the the devil's party, not that the Republicans are much better, but um, a certain segment of the Republicans. I mean that, yeah. And not to get too political, but it's the the majority of the corruption lies on the the DNC side of things. That's not too hard to figure out. They're they're the criminals and thieves, and well, they all are, but uh, more so, just slightly more on that side of things. Um, more collaborations, Super Bowl. He did uh, some religious Bible of Love. So he released a gospel album titled Bible, Bible of Love. Love. Um, other ventures. Look at all. I mean, just like endless, 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 endless. He's a heavy supporter of marijuana. Youths. And he has his medical um, license, I guess you could say, a certificate, whatever, to smoke medical marijuana. Uh, he married his high school girlfriend, then they divorced, then they got back together. They have three kids. And he has some other kids, too. And he even has a grandkid, at least one. Um. 
he smokes approximately 80 blunts a day. That's unreal. Unreal. Uh, he's in the sports. He he uh he's a football coach. He coaches youth teams and he um also coaches uh what are they? uh disabled kids somewhere it's in here uh i i don't know it's in here somewhere coach suit but he's a coach uh he's he was originally part of the nation of islam then he became rastafarian and then he became born again christian so you know he likes changing his religion um did some charity work and he has very except for you know endorsing ron paul uh, he he they they bought him out. He's a sellout, basically. I don't mean that in a bad way. Although it's it's don't it's hard to mean it in a good way. But I mean, he's just a shill for ridiculous, horrible politics. And he's done a lot of business ventures, investments, mostly like cannabis stuff and soul food. And he wrote a book. Like he's just in everything. NFTs, largest. Uh, cocktail legal incidents tons of legal incidents so let's look at his astrology okay he's got a son in libra uh it's in the sixth house uh but close to the seventh house so son in libra in the sixth house definitely shows a lot of um conflict and opposition and competition and, and things of that nature especially in libra because son in libra is debilitated it's opposite it's exaltation in Aries. So uh, Sun in Libra, I mean, first of all, it's it definitely shows that uh, being ruled by Venus, that he has that more, that, that flow. And by the way, his rap style is often completely free, freestyle. Like he's, uh, he doesn't write things down, generally speaking. Like he just goes and, he, and he's just got it. Like, so he's a very skilled rapper. Like he can just really just go. Like, you know, like just freestyle rap without anything written. He just knows how to do that. Uh, but yeah, the 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 the, the smoothness like that is um, Libra, as well as I mean, Venus is ruling a lot of his um, influencing and ruling a lot of his chart. That's a very important planet, and that's in the seventh. Uh, but the sun, uh, the sun is ruling the fifth. And it's in the sixth, but it's very close to the ascendant. So we have to say, or sorry, the descendant. So then it's still influencing the seventh, though I'd say mostly it's in the sixth. But in the sixth house, there's a lot of conflict, uh, a lot of uh, competitiveness, as well as, uh, you know, interest in sports and being a coach. That is also part of that. But uh, we see in his early life, you know, getting into trouble and all that. And that's as well, Sun and Libra, where it's not dignified, especially for, you know, men, uh, you'll often, it's not limited to men, you know, and I know, you know, that, that whole thing is being challenged these days, but, uh, you know, men do often exhibit more of the negative side of the debility, especially, I guess it also depends on the culture, you know, if, you know, him being in you know the 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 gangsta that the that, that kind of lifestyle uh it is really going to bring out the negative side of a debilitated son son in libra which is tends can tend to be um act out more noxious more um negative lack of integrity right and so we're seeing a lot of you know uh early you know, criminal stuff, comp even though it's minor, like, but it's still, it's still there. It's still evident. His south node is in Leo. So it's activating the sun. So this is more in the first half of life, this uh, sort of negative debilitated sun in the sixth house. So you know, a lot of conflicts early on, especially his father was missing from his life. So yeah, that, you know, sun and sun Libra lacks integrity. Obviously, and 
south node also um well shows the first half of life but it you know can show something that is uh also missing or at least partly missing right uh moon and so this is ruling the fifth house also it's good for uh creativity especially because the proximity to the descendant so sun on the descendant if we're if we're looking at it and that's in that um side of things that it's it's great for performance great for uh being recognized seen heard especially by um other people you know like when you're on the stage you have the spotlight on you that's sort of how sun uh conjunct the descendant uh appears it's like you know spotlight is on you because the, there's that relationship versus in the first house it is it's all about the the, the self the individual in the seventh it's all about relationships um, including, you know, big, broad relationships, you know, relationship with the masses. Sometimes you'll see performers with Sun in the seventh. Even though this is bringing, this is half, you know, mostly six, six and seven. So anyway, he does have a lot of seventh house influence with Moon and Scorpio, as well as Venus and, and Mercury. And this is excellent for, um, music and creativity in general because i mean the scorpio is not so good because uh both moon and venus do not do well in scorpio venus is uh in detriment and moon is uh debilitated in scorpio uh mercury is okay in scorpio uh not great though because scorpio always has that 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 death that the sort of like sudden change sudden you know fall fall from grace crisis death right um but that's also partly why he keeps changing you know he has so many different incarnations so many different because venus also is the ascendant lord right but venus and mercury together are are excellent for uh artistic pursuits music uh, or arts and creativity in general um and then the proximity to moon also shows that I think this is also like a big part of why he can just freestyle because the moon, which is his mind, Mercury, the intellect and Venus, the, the aesthetics, the, the beauty, and it's also his ascendant Lord. Um, it's all coming together. So his mind is really connected to the, 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 the expression, the communication. And it's also supported by the sun, even though like, it's the 12th house. The sun is moving this way, you know? So the energy, the kind of the flow is towards the seventh house. And uh, yeah, so it's also dark and heavy and also like, you know, this relates to his cannabis use because Scorpio definitely has a relationship with the, the destructive side of things, the need to go deep and into the... Um, the subconscious and and uh you know do shadow work that's that's part of the scorpio and it's that challenge that that the battle between the lower the lower desires and the the transformation the upward transformation um and especially also because venus and moon are not in good dignity here that it's going to bring out somewhat of the uh, more negative side of things um plus pluto is semi square the moon so you can see that uh here that's exactly 45 degrees so that's heavy right that's heavy on his moon that's heavy on you know the moon is probably benefited and this shows this is very intense about with relationships as well you know he really needs relationships for his emotional satisfaction as well as for his joy he's a huge flirt i'm sure he loves to flirt with women but he also loves to be involved in like many different partnerships and business partnerships and collaborations. And Snoop will always do better working with other people. Like if he just tries to be completely independent, it won't work very well because there's so much seventh house influence here that he needs to do all these business partnerships and collaborations with both of his music and, and everything, you know, working in teams, working in groups, working um, in collaborations and partnerships and, girlfriends, wives, all that. 
You know, he needs he needs all that support from other people. Uh, that's going to work really well for him. Uh, let's hear. Um, MC is in Capricorn, and that's obviously ruled by Saturn. Saturn is in Gemini in the second house. So the, the speech, obviously his career, his success is going to have to deal with, um, you know, speech and especially with in Gemini. So then the expression. So that's very, excuse me. Um, you know, for, for a rapper, that, that's very prominent. That's very good. Uh, he does have all the air signs represented, although it's not in trine exactly. It's still very strong. And this also really uh, st will strongly influence his ability to, to flow because the, the, the aerated uh, mind is very active. All the air signs are lit up. Um, and so that that is uh, you know very prominent for 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 him. Uh, let's see, Saturn has an opposition to Jupiter and in conjunct to Mercury. Mercury is ruling the sixth house. Saturn is authority and law, and so there's a lot of conflict. He has conflict with the law. That's why I pointed out the long list of legal incidents. I didn't go through them all, but just. Obviously, he's going to have issues. Jupiter also represents the law. Jupiter's in good dignity here. So it's not, it, it should be okay, generally speaking. Mercury is okay, but, um, you know, Mercury is is ruling the sixth house. So conflict, conflict and just law issues in general. Uh, so that's, Jupiter is protecting his eighth house. So from you know, sudden, sudden uh, death or crisis or things of that nature, they're going to be mitigated. They're going to be softened. Jupiter's softening the blow of all that stuff. So he's avoiding, he's avoiding trouble. You know, he avoided any sort of uh, final consequences like other rappers face, like Tupac or Biggie, uh, you know, in the whole gangster rap kind of uh culture so yeah his and then his 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 religion his spirituality i think he does have a deep you know jupiter is in sad so it's in a good good condition good um good dignity but it's in the eighth house so they're there it's it's very deep for him and even going into possibly some occultism uh but neptune is also here so that it's 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 spiritual as well um neptune does represent drugs and alcohol so uh there is a high likelihood that he believes in you know uh blunts and gin and juice as far as his you know religion and spirituality <laughs> um maybe more of the maybe early days it was gin and juice and then more it moved more to blunts i don't know but um, it is definitely a part of his philosophy and whatnot, his belief system. And even then he's, you know, there's, it's opposite Saturn. So there is some opposition there with a law, with law, with authority, with whatnot. Um, in any case, that, that is interesting. <clears throat> Mars is basically conjunct the 11th house cusp. Uh, but it's in the 10th whole sign house, so it's still quite prominent. Uh, it's conjuncting also the north node by 11 degrees, uh, north node in the 10th. So this is still very prominent for career because Mars in the 10th, um, even though it's more in the 11th, even though it's, well, 10th and 11th because, you know, 10th whole sign house, but moving into the 11th, Mars in the 10th is excellent for uh, the career because it uses its its strength and its need to push forward. Um, you know, it's pushing upward. It's, it's elevating the person constantly, especially with this North Node here, like this is like constant drive and obsession towards achieving more in his career and growing. And then because of the Aquarius and 11th house influence, it's also uh, moving him towards groups and networks, uh, internet, uh, 
sports teams, things of that nature, collaborations, you know, seventh and 11th of both very social. So he's going to be all about working with others, being social and groups and networks and society and, and, you know, getting involved. He's not a solo player, Snoop Dogg. He, he definitely needs to work with other people. And that's where he's going to have his most success. His greatest success is in partnerships, collaborations and groups and networks. Right. Uh, he's got a square, a very exact square to his ascend Lord Venus and the dispositor of his son as well, Venus, in the seventh, clear. Um, so squares to the nodes indicate, um, you know, the, in, in evolutionary astrology, they say it's a skipped step. But regardless of that, what it what it means is that it's tied into the destiny in this life, and then it has to do with something that needs to be worked on uh, before it, you could you could see it as as something as as a karmic event or events or something an issue that needs to be dealt with and worked on before the person can really fully move into their north node. Right. So for his career success, he needs to worry. He needs to take care of relationships. Especially, you know, um, partnerships, you know, like uh, business partnerships, but mainly marriage, right? Marriage is huge for this because it's Venus. He's a man. It's in the seventh. It's also his ascendant Lord. So we have to take that into account. Like it's it's him, his 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 being, his identity, but also in as far as his relationships are concerned. So that's a big issue for him how he deals with his relationships how he deals with his partnerships that's that's going to be a stumbling block some and something very important for him to resolve especially because it's in scorpio and, and venus doesn't do that well in scorpio has trouble it does have um some dignity being a a um triplicity lord uh and this could be considered a nighttime chart but uh that makes him the it would be the second it's the daytime uh water triplicity lord but that's it doesn't doesn't matter so much um it's also the sec malefic i'm sorry sec benefic um insect benefic um meaning that it's a very uh prosperous beneficial planet for him in any case he's going to do his best when when he has good healthy balanced relationships and he'll need to work on them you know venus and scorpio is all about obsession and domination and just unhealthy attachment in relationship and scorpio is so heavily desirous and loves to dominate and control he needs balanced equal relationships he needs to learn how to do relationships in a healthy way. Right. Uh, and there there could be some destiny here with him. Uh, I don't know. Certain things. Hey, in any case. What else we got here? Uh, Pluto. Pluto is in conjunct the ascendant here. So it's very much sixth house. Uh you know, one thing I could say is that, like, so for, for sports teams that, you know, that's good because Pluto is about control. So owning sport, uh, like, a, you know, coaching and owning sports teams or, or um, leagues or, or, you know, being a coach, some, something like to that effect, that's going to work well with, with uh, Pluto here, uh, especially in Libra. Um, but it's also very conflictual. And again, we're talking about, um, you know, issues with the law. Libra does deal with the law, right? Because balance and, you know, so uh, he really needs to keep his nose clean and not engage in sort of illegal activity, that sort of thing, because that's going to get him into trouble. Uh, but it does indicate here that, you know, in, in these um, six house planets, being in Libra and then the Saturn opposition to Jupiter as well as the in conjunct to Mercury that you know run-ins with authority will always be an issue with him. Uranus here is not helping either way. It's very spontaneous um and doesn't really consider it's just like you know just like hey let's do this crazy thing and you know 
oh, oops, we got into trouble and it was probably stupid. Uh, can mean that, you know, uh, especially with if the sun's not in good dignity, which is not in here, you know. Um, but definitely conflicts are an issue for him. Competition, things of that nature. Um, but service to others as well. I mean, Uranus here is points to definitely a unique, unique lifestyle, day to day grind. Like he's not gonna, he's not gonna want his his normal daily life to be um, normal. You know, Uranus is gonna want it to be completely unique and changing often. And Pluto, like I said, is is good for that, uh, for you know, controlling. So like, you know, having having some sort of um, power and control with uh, relating to service to others. So like, you know, the sports, his sports influence and coaching and and all that. Um, see, Chiron is in conjunct Venus. So there's a lot of issues with his relationships, right? And um, Chiron in the twelfth, that's gonna be that's gonna be difficult because the twelfth house is such a hidden house, and it relates to the subconscious, and so there could be there could be definitely issues, um, hidden hidden painful subconscious issues that uh, he has to deal with certain i don't know could be traumas or just you know wound various wounds or you know rejection something because it's it's within one degree of this venus and then venus is the dispositor of sun and his ascendant lord and it's you know prominent here in the seventh house so his relationships and you know his being his identity his body there's some there's some issues with this Chiron there, um, and well as well as this this square between the nodes. North node is going to be much better than South node because North node is very prominent in the tenth house. So South node, let me just say a bit about this. It's activating the Sun and the sixth house and the debility of the Sun, and so that's not good. That's a lot of conflict, and that's also being in the fourth house. Um, you know, it's approaching the fifth house cusp, but still in the fourth. Um, that's going to show a lot more influence of, um, um, from his home turf, so to speak. And what I mean by that is that California black hip hop culture, gangster rap and all that. Um, that's his early life. That's what he's going to be influenced by and representing that sort of lifestyle. Then as he gets older, especially 42, um, He's moving into the tenth house in Aquarius, so that that's where he diversifies a lot more as he gets older. Gets more, uh, his career will expand much more. He's he's separating from his youth, from the you know the California gang culture that he grew up with. You know, he was a part of. He was actually a gang member, and he was into that 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 that, that criminal lifestyle, which is. I mean, I don't think anyone would disagree if, by saying it's unhealthy, right? Uh, landed him in jail and can cause a lot of trouble. But this is pulling him away from that. The Aquarius is all thinking about society and big picture stuff. Um, it's creative genius. Aquarius, very inventive. Mars is here. Uh, so his career is going to take, you know, center stage from as he, as he um, you know, matures. But you know, 42 is that, that cutoff date. But even in his 30s, this would start pulling his attention more, right? So that that's that. Uh, and it, it's also activating uh, Saturn, which is in the second house in, in Gemini. So it's rap being, you know, rap music and, and um, music in general, expression, speaking, all that. That's going to be much more prominent for him as he gets older. All right. Um, what else? Let's see. I think I touched on everything. 
Saturn's also ruling the 11th house in the second. So groups and networks going into, you know, rap, I guess. I mean, I th this feels, yeah, not I guess, but Gemini is very much um, relating to rap music as well as second house voice and all that. So um, again, that social quality as the groups and networks. Let's just quickly look at his draconic. All right. It's got Mars and Aries in the 12th above this Chiron, directly conjunct Chiron. And <clears throat> so that shows some, some real passive aggressiveness on his part because 12th house Mars can be very passive aggressive. Uh, it is in is draconic, but um, you know, I, I it's interesting. Um, I'm not sure how being being in the twelfth house and draconic, but being such a powerful Mars, it, it plays out. Something it just feels passive aggressive to me. Um, but something this issue with the Chiron here as well. Um, some sort of perhaps that he was abused or beaten or threatened or something, something violent. Mars and Aries can be quite violent. Uh yeah, perhaps. I don't know. There could have been some violent trauma at some point. In any case. And it is it is in conjunct the this Venus, which is his ascendant lord. So his body. Uh so there could have been violence or threats of violence. In any case, I don't know. Um ascendant, draconic ascendant in Gemini, that's prominent for a rapper, very appropriate in the second conjunct the third house cusp. Um, what else? South node conjunct Pluto in Libra. Uh, that's interesting. Pluto in Libra shows issues around relationships, law, um, equality, things of that nature, justice, um, so that, you know, that's all having somehow relating to uh, his past. Uh, Pluto and Scorpio right above the moon. Moon also the past. So a, a Plutonic past, definitely. Issues of power, control, uh, destructive behaviors, things of that nature. Obsessive, uh, very heavy. Um, more eighth house activity here. And Sagittarius. And Sagittarius, you know, seems to fit. Snoop Dogg in my mind because and perhaps is that that's has in, has to do with Jupiter and Sag, but he just feels very Sagittarian to me. Um but uh let's see here. Uranus Uranus uh conjunct Jupiter will show a changing uh religion, changing philosophy, and that we saw that from um being irreligious, growing up cat, growing growing up Christian to being irreligious to being Rastafarian. I don't know that he was irreligious, but it didn't play a major part in his in his life for a while. Then he became Rasta, then um, Christian, right? Yeah. So that's interesting. Uh ninth and tenth house activity here but it's not conjuncting anything and so that's pretty much it Ju moon moon and jupiter both in poor dignity and on uh the draconic and so that's probably i don't know that says something but guys this is pretty much uh snoop snoopy snoop dog um neptune is in conjunct the ascendant I should point that out as well. Uh, so Neptune and Pluto, and there's a, a Yod right on his ascendant. That's what it's called uh, when, when there's two inconjuncts joined by a sextile. Uh, so that he's very influenced, but not in a positive way. That the inconjunct is, is a difficult aspect, sixth and eighth respectively. Neptune uh, for drugs and alcohol, Pluto for destructive behavior, especially in relationships. This is quite a um, dominating 
uh, position, Pluto at zero degrees Libra, dominating in relationships, very unbalanced relationships, relationships that are obsessive and destructive, um, things of that nature. Uh, he did have, I don't know what kind of relationship, but they seemed awfully close with Martha, Martha Stewart. It didn't say anything in, in, in the Wikipedia, but Wikipedia is not the, um, you know, not known for its truth telling. Um, so I wonder if that in six house, six houses, Mar Martha Stewart's domain, you know, service to others, that sort of thing, cooking, um, that's very much six house activity. So Libra, six house with, you know, Pluto, Uranus, Sun on Libra. That, so, yeah. And he wrote a cookbook. So there is a lot of six house activity as well. Right. Um, so Snoop's got his hand in everything. He's all over the place. He's doing every, he's doing everything. Right. Interesting guy. Um, definitely. So that's, that's pretty much it guys. Hope you enjoyed that. And don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't already and leave a comment down below and book a reading with me. My website is macroastrology.com. My email is macrogoldmachine at yahoo.com. And I will see you again soon. Thanks. Bye.